This was meant to be live. It is not. Someday I'm going to learn to use a computer. This was meant to be at a appropriate time. It is not. Someday I will have a schedule. This was meant to be a private conversation. It is not. Someday I will understand boundaries. Now, what's in discussion is, call it a business idea, call it a business problem. Maybe better off calling it a problem. Software gets built and it sucks. Somebody comes to me and says, fix it. The problem, it's not clear. So, going further. How is it that that software came to suck? And when did it suck? Where does it suck? Asking all the questions, the answers, they vary. They vary so much except the answer to the question, why does it suck? The reason the software sucks is because it hasn't been used. Once software gets used, it gets better. Use it some more, better still. Make sure that that software is the only one standing in its category with profits to support continued development, and it's the best in the world. So there's a realization that anyone has along the way in making software. Acquire vast sums of money. Acquire such a large stockpile of cash that there's all the affordances and allowances for spillage that a drug dealer kingpin has. Those drug dealer kingpins, El Chapo among them, are not so brilliant in operational efficiency there's just so much margin and room for error and the dangers of it all make it such that it's a wildly profitable business for no shortage of poor management along the way. Okay, so build some software, want to make it good, get drug dealer money as much as you can. Get it from uh, Sovereign Wealth Fund, it was a good move for Uber. Boy, was that a good move. Uh, go to the uh, Vision Fund out of SoftBank. It's also got Sovereign Wealth Fund money. Hmm. Well, so you don't have access to that type of And the money that you're working with has a honest to goodness limit on it. And yet you'd like to make good software. What you might consider is to get that hourly rate per hour of software engineering to be as low as possible. A couple of ways of doing that in particular to a New Yorker like me, just find somebody who's never done it before. It should be pretty straightforward for that rate to be low when that person has not done it before. That person hasn't done it before. They want to do it. There's no regulation. There's no barrier to entry. They can just $10, $15 per hour, not uncommon tends not to be phrased like that. It tends to be phrased at 
a three thousand dollars for the website and it's only 200 hours later that the person building it realized this is awful another way to get that rate low is to go out of the country new york money uh, how about argentina not so much money pakistan no not so much money either go to one of those what do we call these things? Dev shops over in your LinkedIn messages. And there should be someone out there willing to do it for $5 an hour per engineering hour. Okay. Between uh, affordable nearby, just finding somebody who's never done it before, or affordable far away, somebody who's overseas, well, trade-offs somebody nearby you can bang over the head with a bat somebody overseas nope you got to go way far and i bet that that person nearby is more patriotic than the person who is overseas and the patriotism matters the patriotism whether for the city y'all share or the state y'all inhabit or the country y'all live in gives a sense of oh my doing well on this project means doing well for the surrounding area and since the project is being commissioned by someone in the surrounding area it means all the more someone overseas well, not so much. What are the other considerations? It's possible to go overseas. Would you like to build an app? Go to Pakistan. Go to Argentina. Hang out there for a month to the six, meet that development team that's being available at $5 an hour. You've got yourself a nice American passport that's got as much access as any. You'll be able to not only afford the engineering, you'll save some money because boy, oh boy, if the Going rate for engineering is $5 an hour. You can believe you can afford an apartment there for a bit, a luxurious apartment. Good option, just go overseas. Does that matter so much that it's something you're willing to pay for? You don't have all that much money. You can just be there with the developers and a part of the team with them, not some sort of internet annoyance that occasionally pays them. If you're nearby, they've never done it before. Well, there's options there. They're not as, how do you call it? When you've got to deal with skill, I'm giving the idea to anybody out there. No sweat that hourly rate over in an overseas provider. The skill is there all the way. Every bit is intellectually capable, all the more motivated to improve a lifestyle, a condition of day-to-day -day comfort, an overseas engineering firm or individual is just as capable skill-wise, an affordable nearby person. The only ways to get skill are to have things to work on. If that person is nearby to you, boy, oh boy, 
oversee them. Give them chocolate, give them candy, give them a desk, get them in front of your eyes. Boy, oh boy, if they have never done it and they have no idea what they're doing, they'll do exactly what you do when the going gets tough. Quit. Makes sense to me. All right. Now we've covered people overseas. We've covered people nearby. One option is just to go overseas. The other is to just get that person in the same building. Now that person's come to me, said this software sucks. Why? Because it hasn't been used enough. Now, what do I do with that software? First, I read it. I read every word of it. The person who's coming to me with some sucky software, they're not usually so big. Even the big ones are manageable. The nice thing about it is apps get bigger. They get somehow over time more... Clumpy. Well, no matter. I read it all. It's a simple first step. It doesn't cost me any thought or intellect or even creativity just to read. It's like somebody's given me a book. It's in uh, language without any emotion. So it's uh, laborious read, but all the same. I read it, and then I may actually understand it. But the code base is saying, and in that case, there's a hope I can fix it. The big old asterisk on fix it because fix is a technical thing. Usually, software doesn't suck for technical reasons, it usually sucks because nobody's using it. That's basically, it. So, I cannot, as an engineer, fix that problem. I can fix how it works, I can fix where the code lay, I can fix everything but what the person is looking for me to do. And therein comes all manner of dissatisfaction. Therein comes uh, refunds, there comes nights of uh, I've, I've cried because I've had to deal with some of this terrible guilt of not, no matter how much engineering I do, being able to fix that fundamental problem. Nobody's using this thing. So if it sucks because nobody's using it, it's got to be fixed by getting people to use it. And that's worth money. Definitely not usually what people consider when they're about to spend $3,000 to build an app and having somebody build it who's never built anything ever. It seems like those customers are of the mindset that the person building the app is also going to solve the problem of people using it. They're not. Different thing entirely. The person building it is usually thinking in their heads that the person who's paying for this is going to get people to use it. No, no, they're probably not. They'll probably try it out themselves and then call it a day. So the problem is the app sucks. Now somebody's come to me and said, fix it.
Well, one good thing that happens is people are being paid to use the app. Their job relies on it. There's a certain type of application, enterprise application is usually what it's called when it's egomaniacal. Enterprise is like the best. Oh, we do enterprise is good. Internal tools might be the other word for it. These are basic tools that people use day to day in order to do their job. So those ones are the fix. Talk to the people that the business that is asking for their internal tool to be fixed and then fix it based on the ideas that those people who are paid to use it would like to see implemented. Pretty cool. Consumer facing app. I got nothing to say about those. Uh, creative app. Creative app I like. Weird apps. Weird apps are those that somebody wants built and they don't have any thought that it actually needs anyone to use it at all. They're so gung-ho on the idea. They just want to see it exist at all outside of their head in any way, shape, or form. Some people have had the money when they've come to me to see it to the end. Some people have not, but they are satisfied either way. They know what they're getting into. They know they're chasing something that's not exactly rational. They're in it for the love. They're in it for something more than uh, A to B solution for a problem. The coolest of these for me has been something called Island Dog. The very first app I was a project manager on was uh, maybe to be thousand dollars in uh, expenses. And the total audience was a single grandson of the person who paid for it. It was brilliant. Island Dog with Jackson, the Island Dog, was something that got us as the team building it into recording studios, into sort of uh, huddles of we're doing a radio ad. Why are we doing a radio ad? Uh, I don't know. And so we're doing a radio ad. And then the app launched in the White House. The person commissioning it, willing to spend $50,000, was, uh, I'll believe in Eris. I never really asked her. But her husband was a Harvard professor whose job was to go to heads of state and tell them about the environment. So the thing got in the White House. Cool. A couple of things you can do to get users is one, neglect having any concept that anybody's got to use this for any problem solving purpose, and then spend your money as you please until you are out or satisfied. The other these enterprise apps, these internal tool apps, just talk to the people at the business that you expect to be using it and implement their ideas. Great. Simple. And that's tricky, though. I'm actually not doing that right now. I owe Kenny uh, improvement in my methodology by just speaking to the people at the firm. Uh oh, he's spent a good bit of cash asking me to build an app without ever introducing me to anybody who's going to use it. That's a problem. That's a problem. And I've never asked. I have nothing more to say. I suppose when it comes down to uh, 
I'm sure they just got to go talk to some of the, it's been like three months. I haven't in three months of building this app even asked to talk to anybody who might use it. Well, that's something to do. And then closing down this conversation. I can say for this, what might have been private, now public. How does someone who is given an app, someone like me, fix it, no matter where it came from? It's one of those enterprise apps. Go out to those people in the company and talk to them and be sure that they have their ideas implemented. They'll use it, period. Who's not going to use the app that does the thing they asked for it to do? A consumer facing app, not going to touch on. And the creative app. Creative app, be sure to talk to the person paying for it constantly as much as possible and show progress. Show changes. There's no direction, so it's not so much progress towards a goal. It's just, here's my work. All right, enough of this. Take care.